Hi everyone, welcome to the channel and welcome into my next video. Today I'm going to be going into my five top tips to make sure that you're fit for the Royal Marines. But before we do that, I just want to say a massive thank you to anyone who's watched my previous Royal Marines video because we've had a lot of positive feedback from that, which is absolutely awesome. And we're hoping to sort of bring that into this video as well. So be sure to pop this one a like and comment below any questions or any of your thoughts that you have along the way. And if you do like watching these kind of videos, then I highly recommend subscribing to the channel, hitting the little notification button, just so you get a little nudge and you know when I'm putting these kind of videos up. And while you're here as well, I highly recommend just checking out my channel, checking out some of my other videos, because I do have fitness bits, food bits, and general sort of fun and bits and bobs as well. So go see what you think of that. But for today, we're sticking to the Marines, we're sticking to the tips, so let's take it into the video. So a bit like the last video, this isn't a chronological order, so one's not like the most important, five is the least. It is just five that I'm chucking out there for you to make some notes on. So first things first, probably one that people really neglect, and actually it is probably a bit of a highlight, is highlight your weaknesses. So what I mean by that is, with the Royal Marines, obviously to get in, you have to pass your pre-joining fitness test, your PRMC, then you're in training, and you do the full shebang. So, look at it like this. If you're going in to do your virtual pre-joining fitness test, which is the burpees, the push-ups, the sit-ups, and the plank, and you're, say, really, really good at burpees, really, really good at push-ups, but terrible at sit-ups, and okay at the plank, there is no point going into that fitness test if you're very strong at one and not very good at the other. And a lot of people neglect their weaknesses. They don't like to highlight them because obviously if you're good at something, you'll rather do that more. And if you're bad at something, you generally tend to avoid it. So my best advice is to basically do these kind of tests, whether it's your free miler, the virtual pre and joining fitness test, anything like that, is to then pick out the points which you're not so good at and actually dedicate some extra time to making that better. So if you are, say, weak at the setups, like I said, using that as an example, what you can then look to do is obviously keep on top of all your other stuff, but it doesn't mean stop what you're good at, but it just means maybe incorporate this more into your weekly routine, incorporate more sets, more reps and just so you can progressively get better and then when you go to do these tests obviously you're then well rounded which then means you're only going to perform better and get better results and relating this back to me very very quickly when i joined the marines my weakest spot i would say was probably running uh, to be totally honest the general kind of fitness bits i used to do loads of different exercise whether it was swimming, obviously running, circuits, weights, all that kind of stuff, but running was always my weak spot. So to improve on that, what I just started to do was incorporate more running into my week. I started to do more free miners, I started to do longer distance, I started to do interval training. And it was all about incorporating that sort of variety to make me a well-rounded runner, so that when I got to my free miler, I could perform better. And that massively paid off for me, because when I went into training, I'd never actually enjoyed running. I've never enjoyed, I don't think I'd ever actually enjoy running but when I did go for the runs and I done my three mile runs I was hitting out that one and a half miles out 12 minutes 12 and a half minutes quite comfortably felt good and then coming back my personal best that I ever got I believe was 846 which isn't like the best that you're ever going to see but it's actually quite a good time to be getting and that's for someone who sort of odd class myself as not naturally a good runner so I would say highlight those points make a few sort of plans of how you can improve on them and sort of implement that into your programs Tip number two, progressive overload. This pretty much happens in any part of life. And the only way you're gonna get better, it's like truly get better, better at something, is to progressively overload yourself. Look at training, for example. You don't join on day one and you're expected to do the 30 miler five days later. Because it, you, might, you might be able to do it, if you're really, obviously if you're really fit and really strong, you might be able to do it. But your body hasn't sort of been built up to where it needs to be to get to that point. And what you'll tend to notice is obviously through training, it's an eight month period. What you do is you've got your plan, building you up step by step all the way to the end so you can complete all your commando tests in that final week. And this comes to exactly the same as preparation for training. So if you're right at the beginning of your journey, you've never really done much fitness, but you aspire to be in the Royal Marines, obviously you've got some work to do. And you're not gonna be able to achieve that by jumping in doing three 10 mile runs a week, five circuit sessions a week and swimming 10 miles, it just isn't gonna happen. So what you've gotta look at is basically where you're at right now and how you're gonna progressively build that up. For example, with your running, three miles is the test, but if you've never done a three mile run before and you don't think that's ever gonna happen, give it a test, see how you do. You can then break it down. You can break it down into maybe going for 
a mile run, make sure you're comfortable at that. Build it up to a two mile run, make sure you're comfortable at that. And then maybe bring it back to one and a half miles, but at a faster pace. You kind of get what I'm saying here, is you have these targets to be hitting, but to get there, you have to progressively build yourself up and that's how you're gonna build better and stronger over a prolonged period of time. And it's gonna basically bring you into a better position at the end of it as well. Looking at probably one of the biggest exercises a lot of people struggle with is pull-ups. Pull-ups, for example, that is a massive one that a lot of people struggle to build up and get to. And simple progressive overload for that. Obviously, jumping up on a bar, you might not be able to do a pull-up straight away. So what do you do? You have to go to the gym and maybe use the lap pull-down machine to build up. So obviously, you're actually imitating a pull-up but building up the weights as you go. Obviously, you progressively build up on those weights. You then start to do your pull-ups outdoors on a bar. You might have to use a band to assist you. You then take the band away and you can do your body weight pull-ups. What I then started to do was to add weight to myself when I started to do the pull-ups, mainly because obviously when you're in training, you start to add weight. But for me, it was then saying, right, if I can do 10 pull-ups with weight on my back, 10 pull-ups without weight on my back is gonna be a lot easier. So same again, break it down, look over a time scale of what you're looking for and progressively build yourself to where you need to be. Number three is variety in your training. Obviously with the Marines, you have your targets you need to hit. You're running, your push-ups, etc., etc. And I always like to say, practice what you need to be good at. So that's kind of like what you need to do, but to get the variety in there is a very, very good idea because the more variety you have, the better your body's gonna to condition to everything. So that doesn't mean go into the gym and just do bench press to get good at your push-ups. This basically means incorporate maybe some strength training, some endurance training, some hypertrophy training, body weight training. And I think this is like quite relevant to just training in general because you need to be able to enjoy it. If you were to go out for a run every day of the week and you were just doing a run, <laughs> you're probably gonna to start to begrudge it, not enjoy it so much. So focus on building your body to like an all round perspective. You need, kind of need to be sort of fully fit rather than just one piece fit, if that makes sense. And that's relevant to point number four. Point number four is functional, not hench. I think a lot of people fall into a bit of a dangerous trap when you're looking at getting fit for the Marines and stuff like that. As you see these pictures of Marines that are like, huge and tanks and stuff like that. And you automatically think, I need to be huge to be able to get in there. I have seen such a variety of people like you wouldn't believe. I'm talking from quite, really quite slender to actually someone packing a bit of fat. It's, there is such a variety in the Marines and it's it just goes to show that you don't have to be that perfect physique to be able to get in and actually do well at your job. And the whole point of saying functional, not hench, is that you're not joining to look good with your top off. You're joining to be good at your job, you're joining to make sure that you can actually do what you needed to do, which involves such a wide range of things. So that could be obviously from yomping for hours and on end, it could be sprinting short distances, it could be carrying various amounts of weight, it could be lifting your body up, up ropes and stuff like that. So you've got to remember that, yeah, you might look good by doing all this sort of training, which is obviously great, like a lot of people, you know, love to look hench, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, it's great, like, it's one of the things I've always wanted to try and do. But at the same time, you want to make sure that you're functionally fit to be actually do what you're signing up for. So before you start to go away and think, I need to be doing my bodybuilding plan to make sure that I'm fit for the Marines, I'd highly recommend sort of reassessing that and saying, right, yeah, you can fit in a couple of those kind of sessions, but you want to be able to get in your functional fitness uh, on the side of that as well. And number five, this is like a really good tip actually for anyone who's definitely obviously looking to join, is aim higher than you need to be. That will literally make the world of difference and I believe that would be sort of the split between a pass or a fail if you're not careful when you come to do some of your tests. Because if you go to do your say pre-joining fitness test or your PRMC and you're just scraping the barrier of a pass mark, I would probably recommend delaying it until you're past that pass mark. Because you've got to remember that when you're doing these kind of tests, when you're actually there, you're probably gonna be more fatigued, more tired, you might have an off day, you know, we all have good days and bad days, and that's completely fine, there's nothing wrong with that, but you wanna make sure that your bad day is still gonna see you through uh, the passing standard. So obviously if they're asking you for 60 push-ups, you wanna make sure that you're aiming, you know, for 100, that you can do 100, so 60 is a bit more comfortable. Same with a mile and a half run. Don't expect to be getting your mile and a half run back in 10 minutes and 29 seconds to pass. You wanna be aiming for, for nine, ideally, pushing as close to nine as possible so you know that you're confidently gonna pass. Because confidence makes a world of difference 
on your performance. If you know you're going in headstrong, saying that you're gonna smash and you're gonna get those results, rather than being timid and thinking, oh yeah, I only got, you know, just about scraped the 60 push-ups before, before I come in this week, because that's just not a, a confident mindset to be in. That brings me to the end of the list of the five tips. I'm sure there's more that I can highlight, but I just wanna to stick to five today. And I think they kind of all accumulate to a similar kind of point. And that point is trying to round yourself as a whole within fitness, rather than just focus on one element. And also making sure that you're hitting that with confidence. And that is gonna leave you in a strong place to go past these fitness tests and make sure that you're fit for the Marines. Thanks again everyone for watching. The positive feedback is always appreciated. So feel free to drop your questions below or if there's any ideas of videos that you wanna see, pop the video a like, it's much appreciated. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And have a little bit of a browse of the other videos. For example, my previous one was, I only ate pizza for 24 hours, I mean, what better video <laughs> could you ask for? So enjoy that guys, and I'll see you on the next one.